Hello and welcome to our latest web worship. Uh, the theme for this particular episode is the road to Emmaus and the, the events after uh, Easter and after the resurrection, just what was happening. Um, so, as usual, a few bits of music um, and a reading and reflection. First one is from Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe. Mm -hmm. daily 
still coughing and spluttering a bit but it is easing thankfully <coughs> he says cough uh, the reading uh, is that road to Emmaus passage in the Gospel of Luke it says this now the same day that is the day of the resurrection two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to, the, to be sentenced to dead him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what's more, it is the third day since all that took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are! How slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken! Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked to us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Then they got up, returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and he appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way to Emmaus and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Amen. <coughs> the centre of the Gospel is Jesus Christ. kind of goes without saying, but I think sometimes we forget. We can fill it up with so many other things, important things, nurturing things, but at the heart, the Gospel is about Jesus. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth. That'll bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song 
For a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it When it's all about you All about you King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and I'm poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, or a song in itself. Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it When it's all about you Our two journeyers that we hear of had been in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus' arrest and trial, at the time of the Last Supper and of the crucifixion. They were part of the group. <coughs> they were not one of the inner twelve, the twelve disciples, but they were part of that group because they knew them. The scripture tells us that they went back to be with the eleven and the rest of the believers. So perhaps not the core group, but they were part of that wider group that followed Jesus. They had this hope. A hope that he might be the one to redeem Israel. To bring God's reign back into their land. To change their lives. To change everything. They had heard a report earlier that day from the women that had been to the tomb and, and said that, you know, he's, a, he's, a, a ra he's risen. He, the tomb is empty. The, the, the cloths are there, but the body is gone. But they weren't sure. They didn't see it for themselves. And, and the others who went to, to check on what the women had reported came back and said that the, the place was as described. But they didn't see Jesus. Perhaps from early that morning when the report started to feed back, they clung on to that hope and waited and waited and waited. <coughs> but now it was getting late. Emmaus is seven miles west of Jerusalem at two to three hours walk. And we know from the reading that they arrived just as evening was approaching. So they must have waited to the very last minute 
before setting off on that journey home, holding off to wait and see, just in case. And as they walked, perhaps with each step, their hope dissipated, left behind in the footprints in the sand. And then, aware that someone had joined them, joining in their conversation, what are you talking about? And Jesus must have come up from behind, because they say, aren't you the only one? who's been in Jerusalem, so he must have been heading in the same direction. <coughs> so he hasn't met them coming the other way. He's joined them and asked them, what are you, what are you talking about? And they shared their hope, a hope now seemingly crushed and destroyed. Jesus doesn't console them. He doesn't pat them on the back and go, oh, there, there, it'll be fine. He challenges them. Then you know this is the way it's meant to be? This is the way it had to be? This is what scripture says? And then he unpacks the whole of scripture. From Moses right through the prophets. Everything woven into his story. Into him. He was fulfilling the whole of scripture. He was their hope. They just didn't quite understand what it meant. That deep conversation, walking along, listening. And as they say, their hearts burned within them. Is this true? Could it really be? Confirming all these promises, all these hopes. And then perhaps too soon, they arrive home. But it is late and they invite them in as they should. It was it was would be good and polite custom <coughs> to come and share the meal with them and to shelter for the night. And so he went in and he took the bread of the meal. It was often the custom that an invited guest would be invited to share the prayer. The simple prayer that is said at every Jewish table as they break bread. Thanks be to God for bringing forth food from the earth. And in that moment, as bread was broken, eyes were opened. Hope confirmed. Faith made resolute. And they had to do something about it. They had to return and tell the others what they had seen, what they had heard. And they heard their accounts and put them all together. as a testimony that Jesus had risen. That he was alive in a different way, but he was alive. And things would never be the same again. In this short account of this walk, we see word and sacrament held together in Jesus. He explained the scriptures. He explained the prophets. And he broke bread. That same breaking of bread as he did at the Last Supper. As we repeat and reenact every time we share communion. He was in the Word. And he was in the sacrament. As we engage with Jesus. Just like our two journeyers did. It is a sacramental moment. It is a holy moment. A holy action. And it confirms in us. His presence. His truth. His word. And as we engage with scripture. Jesus unpacks it for us. He will explain its meaning. When it seems to be beyond our comprehension. We will see him. If we look for him. Throughout the pages of scripture. From the very beginning. All the way through. But to do that. To encounter Christ. In the word. 
We need to engage with the word. <coughs> we need to read it. And it's hard work. Because not only do we have to read it, we need to listen to what it is saying. To its truth within us. And some bits are ugly and messy and, and violent and so many things that we might find distasteful. But it's finding God's story behind these things, through these things, to feed us, to nurture us, so that our hearts would burn within us. And we would go, we'd go and tell people that Christ is risen. For those of you with <coughs> laptops and tablets and smartphones, there's a really half decent Bible app. That if you just go on to uh, whatever you, the store is, Google Store or Play Store or whichever one your device uses, if you put in free Bible uh, application, a whole host will come up. And one is either called Version, or it might be called Bible, but it's by LifeChurch.tv. It's a good app. It, it can it, You can download and, and hold within your device different translations of the Bible so you can look at different different ones to suit. There's lots of reading plans and reflection series on different themes to help encourage you to engage with scripture. So I, I, I'm not recommend it because others are available but it's the one I use. Let's put it that way. As we move through Easter beyond Easter. It is now more than ever that we need to recognise that the story of Easter hasn't stopped. We can't package it up and say that was for then. It is for now. It is for all of us as we journey in faith. So perhaps as we have more times of <coughs> confinement than we would have in the past, we have an opportunity to engage with scripture a little more. I would invite and encourage you to do that. If you are continuing with the reading plan that we've developed, that you can access through the webpage, clarenkirk.org.uk, that's great. If you haven't started that, feel free. It's, there's a link on the very front page and you can either do it in bits or do it as a whole. It's absolutely up to you. But I encourage you to engage with scripture because that too is a sacramental act because in it we meet Christ and as we meet Christ our eyes are opened our souls are fed and our hope renewed at the end of the day when evening had come and it was dark and dangerous to travel our two journeyers ran back to Jerusalem, ran back, rushed back to be with the others and to tell them the Lord is risen. We have met him, we have seen him, he has spoken to us. Our hope is renewed. May our hope be renewed in Christ. I invite you to join me in a prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, who reveals himself in word and in sacrament, in scripture and in action, all held together in Jesus our Lord, we rejoice and give thanks for the Easter celebration, that great reminder to the church that the Lord is risen. <clears throat> But we seek that burning within us, that fueling of our faith and our heart, our passion, to not just let it fizzle out, but to carry that hope forward and onward in our lives. That we too would find we have to share it with those we meet. They may have doubts. 
they may reject it but they should at least be offered the hope of the gospel so give us the courage and the words create the opportunities we pray even in these times of restriction and separation your word will not be withheld hold us we pray in your your gracious embrace calming our fears feeding our faith nurturing our spirits we pray for our loved ones that we can't be close to we pray that you would bless them and keep them protect them hold them in the very palm of your hand we give you thanks for all those serving in the care sectors within our nation whether in hospital or in homes we thank you for their willingness to be on that front line to help to bring comfort to bring release and relief we ask you to bless them and their families but we acknowledge that there are people who will not come through this whose bodies cannot deal with this virus and even some in our own community so we remember all who grieve all who have faced loss be their comfort we pray And as we take time to look at the wonder of your creation, Lord, as spring bursts forth, as trees come into leaf, <coughs> as blossom appears, as plants bud and bloom, may your life in us also flourish. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Close with a, a good going golden oldie. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of God the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done, great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing, through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher, and greater will be. Our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he had done. And give 
May the God of all glory inspire you and enlighten you. May he enrich you and deeply bless you, wherever you are, now and even forevermore. Amen. I hope you'll be able to join me the next time we have one of these. Uh, and if you want to let other folk know that these are available, please feel free. Pass on the good news. The Lord is risen. Amen.